Watch almost any film or TV program and you'll see shots of a blurry, defocused background. Now these not only look more professional and cinematic, but they also help focus the viewer's attention by isolating the subject from the background. In this video, I'll show you what you need to get that cool effect and also the best way to achieve it. Now almost any camera can create this blurred out background, but some can do it to a much greater degree than others. Now if you're into photography, you've probably already heard and seen of this, and there it's called bokeh or bokeh. Now this is a Japanese term, and it literally translates into blur, and it's quite often used to describe the aesthetic quality of the blur of the background. Now to create this, you actually need a shallow depth of field, but what does a shallow depth of field actually mean? Now the depth of field refers to how much of the actual scene from front to back is actually in focus. Now obviously this is a shallow depth of field, but how shallow I can actually demonstrate now. Um, if I put my hand to my face here, you'll see that it should be in focus. Now as I move it forward, you'll soon see it move out of focus very rapidly until I'm almost at the camera lens now and it's really out of focus. Now if I do the same with this hand here and I move backwards, you'll see again it moves rapidly out of focus as I go back. Now the depth of field in this actual shot is approximately 12 inches, so it's only that deep. So I can't really move much more than six inches front and six inches back before I become so out of focus that it's not really a usable shot anymore. Now compare this to a deep depth of field which I can show you now. Now I've changed a couple of settings on the camera and as you can see now we have a really deep depth of field and whereas before it was around about 12 inches now you can see it's huge. In fact it is so deep I should demonstrate this by showing what we did before and I'll start off with my hand here and before it was going out of focus about here. Now it's in focus literally up to the actual camera. And again I can do the same this way but in fact I don't even move my hand I can actually just walk all the way over to here and you can see I'm still in focus way back over here. So what's actually controlling the actual depth of field and how does it make it from very short to actually very deep? Well there are several factors in here. Firstly the position of where you're actually standing or where the subject actually is. Now when I'm standing close to the camera and I'm in focus then the chances are that I will have more of the background out of focus. Now obviously this isn't the case because I'm still in the same position I was before and as you can see there is no background blur. Secondly, the actual lens or the focal length of the lens will make a lot of difference as well. Now this is a wide angle lens or fairly wide angle lens, it's a 35mm lens on this camera at the moment. And that will naturally give a deeper depth of field with less background blur. But again, as we can see, I had a deep background uh, or deep uh, blur before with a shallow depth of field and now I've got a very deep background here with no blur but I haven't changed the lens at all it's exactly the same lens so there are two other factors which really come into play and these are the size of the image sensor that the camera uses and the size of the aperture that the lens is set to now one of the main determining factors in getting that really shallow depth of field is going to be the size of the image sensor in the camera. And basically you want to go for the camera which has got the largest image sensor you can get your hands on. And out of these, really it's going to be this one here. This is a Sony a7S and this has a full frame sensor in it. Other full frame sensor cameras would include the Canon 5D, the 6D and also the Nikon 600D. So this sort of thing here will give you the shallowest depth of field when combined with a very large aperture lens. This is the one, the sort of size camera image sensor you need to go for. Obviously you these are the most expensive as well and also the lenses are more expensive because they're physically bigger. So the next size down from here is one like this. This is a crop sensor um, camera, an APS-C size sensor in here. This is a Canon 600D, um, also known as a Rebel T3i and there's also the Rebel T4i, the T5 now. Um, so there's a whole range of cameras which use this size of image sensor. Now this 
will not produce quite such a shallow depth of field for the same size aperture lens as this one, but it still can do reasonably well. And then we come down to this one. This is actually the Panasonic GH4, 4K camera, 4K capabilities, but this has got the micro four thirds image sensor. And this is actually only one quarter of the size of the Sony's here. You can get a shallow depth of field with these, but you're gonna have to use really wide aperture sort of um, lenses, probably in the region of about 0 0.95, 0.12, uh, 1.2, sorry. Compare that to this. This is an iPhone 5. This is used a lot by people to shoot video. And this has got probably the smallest sensor of any of the main video cameras. It's only like three and a half mil by four and a half mil inside here. So if you compare that to the, the Sony's, you can see just how small it is. And this is the lens. The image sensor is slightly smaller behind here. Now the thing is, a lot of compact cameras and other um, tablets have these size image sensors in them. Even the camera which I'm shooting on at the moment, which is a Panasonic SD900, has only got an image sensor which is probably around about twice the size of this, just over twice the size. So it's not very big. And this is what you're gonna find. But when you're getting into the video cameras, the consumer video cameras, compact video cameras, mobile phones and smart uh, tablets and that sort of thing, the image size is, is very, the image sensor size is very small. And that is gonna be a big, big limiting factor to get in that shallow depth of field. Now the second requirement to get in a really shallow depth of field is actually going to be the lens. And it's gonna be the lens that controls that depth of field and as to how actually shallow or deep it actually is. And these are two lenses here. This one here is the lens which I've been using on my Sony and it's a 35 mil f1.5. And you can see it's quite a big lens. This here is a lens for the Panasonic GH4. So this is the smallest image sensor camera. And this is a zoom lens. It goes from 12 to 35 mil. This is fixed 35 mil. This is an F 2.8 lens. This is an F 1.5. Now, because this is an F 2.8, this can't produce the same sort of uh, shallow depth of field that this lens can provide, even if they were the same format. You need to get really down to f 1.5, 1.4, 1.2 to get that really shallow depth of field. Now if we have a look what's going on in the back here, you can see that the aperture blades are closed up now, that's f 22, and this gives you the very deep depth of field. If we open it up and we go to like f 8, f 5.6, it's now opening up and the, the depth of field is now becoming shallower. That is now f 2.8, that's where this lens stops and this keeps going, and this will now go on to an f1.5, and that is as wide open as this lens will go. So as we saw with the cameras, we saw we had the size of the image sensor and also the aperture of the lens, which combined can create a very shallow depth of field. But it's really the aperture which is gonna be the controlling factor, because we can't control the size of the image sensor. Once you've got the camera, that stays fixed. So the only thing that's gonna be variable then, really is gonna be the aperture size of the lens and how wide open it can go. Obviously, the more wide open the actual lens can be, the shallower the depth of field can be. Um, but this also creates a few problems. Now, at the moment, we've got a really deep depth of field, and I've got this lens set to f22, which is its minimum setting. Now, on a lot of cameras, that will be so dark you won't be able to see anything. So what we have to do with this is to actually then crank up the ISO setting on here. You could reduce the shutter speed down, but obviously you can only go so low. And I'm keeping a, a constant 50th of a second uh, throughout the whole of this filming uh, session. So I'm not changing anything on the shutter speed. So the only thing I can do here then is to actually control the actual light level, the sensitivity of the camera by the ISO level. Now at the moment, this camera, which is a Sony a7S, which is a very low noise and also has a very high ISO capability, is set to 10,000 ISO. Now a lot of people say, well, wow, that's really high ISO compared to some cameras. And it, and it is. And basically it allows me to get this really super deep depth of field with the same 35mm lens. Um, 
but with the same light levels. And it's the light levels which are going to be the sort of killer here. Because now if we want to get the shallower depth of field and reduce this down, we've got to actually open up the aperture. And if we open up the aperture, say f5.6, thereabouts, now instantly you see it's got much, much brighter. It's letting in too much light. So first of all, we can actually put on an ND filter. This is an ND4 filter. That will knock down some of the light input. But equally, I'm going to have to reduce the ISO. And if I ring the ISO down, we're coming down to around about uh, 3,200 on the ISO now to actually get uh, the light level down to what it was before. Now I've got a bit of depth of field coming back in again. It's still quite deep, but you can see it does blur it out a bit. Um, not a lot, but a bit. It's probably now probably around about four, five foot, something like that, the actual depth of field. So if we really want it that really shallow depth of field, we've got to open that aperture right up, which is going to let in obviously a lot more light. Now, when we get into this stage, you could actually reduce the actual light coming in by adjusting the shutter speed and speeding it up. But I don't want to do that because Really, if you do that, you end up with a high shutter speed. You could end up at like 500, 1,000, or even 2,000, or even higher maybe. And you end up with a very hard, jittery sort of look. And when you're trying to get a shallow depth of field, you don't want this hard, jittery look because the two don't really go together. So what you need to do is keep the ND filter on here. And this is how I'm controlling the actual amount of light. Um, this ND4 filter is knocking down the light and as I've opened it up now we've got down to 3200. If we actually go down a bit more, if we go down to f2.8, we'll see it's opened up again. I need to reduce the ISO again and we'll go down and we need to be probably around about ISO 800 now. So again it keeps the light level consistent but I'm actually again in focus. Now you can see the depth of field is becoming shallower there, like so. Now if we really go for a super shallow depth of field, we go down to f1.5. This opens up the lens even more, lets more light in, so you've got to knock down the ISO even more. So we go down, and on this setting it's around about 320. So now we have this really shallow depth of field on here, and you can see Deep of it, but I'm just moving the focus plane so it's in focus over there and then moving the whole thing so it comes over to here and then back again and then back. So this is what you're actually doing with the aperture and the focus. The focus is actually moving this small plane of focus backwards and forwards and the aperture is controlling how deep the actual amount of focus or the depth of field actually is from a very shallow which we've got at the moment to the very deep when we've got the aperture really compressed down and that's what you need to do to actually get this shallow depth of field. So what sort of cameras do you actually really need to look for if you're looking for that really shallow depth of field? Well I'm afraid it isn't going to be one of these. A lot of people use these on YouTube and uh, for filming around but the combination of the very small sensor size and the wide angle small lens, uh, short focal length lens, really does nothing for shallow depth of field and that nice blurred out background. You can get it if you look at something probably about a couple of inches away and even then the background is going to be still pretty much in focus. It's going to have a tiny amount of blur but not much. But that's about as far as you're going to go. These things are not going to be any good if you want that shallow depth of field. If we move up to a video camera like this, this is going to be better. It's got a better lens on it, which will certainly help, but the small image size sensor in here is still going to be a problem. There are some bigger image sensor cameras around. There is the FDR AX100 from Sony, which is a 4K camera, and that has a one inch sensor in it, so that's quite large. Now that will start to give you a reasonable sort of background blur. But again, 
the lens is not that shallow. It only goes down to about 2.8 maximum. If we really want to get some really super shallow depth of field, you've got to go towards the DSLRs with the big image sensors. This is the 600D. This is a crop frame sensor. Now, when it's compared up with this, this is a 50 mil f1.4. You can get a really nice background blur. But because it's a crop frame sensor, it means then that this 50 mil lens actually works like an 85 mil lens on my full frame camera here. So if you're going to do, um, or you're going to want to do that really shallow depth of field work, you really need to go for a full frame camera. And a lens of approximately about 2.8 or less, I would go for something like a 1.5, 1.4. If you can afford to go down to 1.2 or 0.95, you're gonna spend thousands and thousands of pounds on the lens, whereas this lens was only like 350 pounds, and it's gonna do almost the same job. Again, depending upon the focal length of the lens, this is 35 mil. If it was a 50 or an 85 mil, it will give me a, uh, a nicer, uh, shallower depth of field for the same given sort of uh, size of a sensor as well. But obviously I can't get in as close because it's gonna be more focused in. This gives me a good compromise so I can get a shallow depth of field and also get in most of the room and the scene I actually need. So there we are. If you want a shallow depth of field, you need to go with the biggest sensor size camera, which is full frame and really an F 1.4 or thereabouts lens. So I hope you enjoyed the video and you found it useful and it shed some new focus onto the subject. Ooh, bad pun, this is bad, bad. Anyway, if you did, don't forget to rate and subscribe and also leave any comments in the box below and also share this with anybody you think might find it useful. Also, don't forget to hop on over to video-alchemy.com, don't forget that, and visit our sign up our newsletter and see what we do over there as well. Anyway, my name's Paul Shalito, this has been a Video Alchemy production and until the next time, see you later. Bye.